Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Crash Course. Of course, the original Crash Course, Crash Course Radio, the 103.9, but now we are now Crash Course Podcast. I couldn't be more psyched. Uh, we were looking forward to this day. Um, I believe this is my, uh, this is going to be our third episode. Anthony, is that correct? I got my, uh, my good friend and my, uh, experienced technician here and was, <laughs> oh, technically, oh, that's right. Very good. Very good. Yes. Very good. See, that's why, Ant, that's why I have Anthony here. He was my, uh, <laughs> he was my right, right man, uh, assistant there at the radio station. He was my engineer, um, all hands on deck with him. And he's, uh, he's been with me for over a year now. We've been working together, um, ran into each other at the radio show. And Anthony has been a tremendous asset to me and to Collision Services Network. And of course, Crash Course. So uh, we've gone from Crash Course Radio to Crash Course Podcast. And Anthony made a very good point there. Thank you, sir. Um, yes, we're, we're including this along with all of the shows. You can go to Spotify and Anchor. All right. Um, I used to talk about that a lot on the radio. Now I can say realistically that you can go there and hear the podcast as well. It used to be the uh, radio show snippets, but now thanks to modern technology, you can hear. Uh, that, our past radio shows, and now you can hear the new podcast, all right? So we are on Spotify and Anchor, and you can also find us on YouTube. Please go to the YouTube channel. We are building our following there. We're very excited about that. Check us out over at YouTube. And, of course, you know, you can find us at Facebook, Instagram. We're real active on Instagram, love Instagram. Uh, we get a lot of uh, a lot of feedback from people there. We got a lot of interaction, a lot of people checking us out. So go to Instagram. Uh, please follow us, all right? If you're not following, please become a follower of Collision Services Network. Speaking of Collision Services Network, CollisionServiceNetwork.com, the only place you need to go if you need to find a reliable and professional auto body shop, all right? one that's going to work for you and not the insurance guys. And folks, I can't stress how big of a deal that is, all right? Big, big deal, Okay. <laughs> Um, we'll get into that more more down the road. Uh, I have spoken to, about that at length. Um, I can't emphasize it enough. Uh, it's uh, it's a really big deal. All right, I see it on a daily basis. I work over at V and J Auto Body. V and J Auto Body is one of our original um, original shops to join CollisionServiceNetwork.com. All right, they are still with us today. They were a sponsor of the radio show. All right, we love V and J. V and J Auto Body. Thank you very much for all your support. Uh, throughout the years and your continued support. I work there as a writer and a manager, so I deal with this all the time, right? I used to like to say on the radio that, uh, you know, I'm not just a talking head, all right, or some academic, you know, on one of these, um, you know, one of these trade magazines or trade shows where, you know, they like to get together and yak it up and kick around all these theories and kick the can down the road about how great this should be and that should be. That's all, that's all good, and I, that has a place. Don't get me wrong, right? But, um, you know, I feel like I bring a little more of a realism to the game, all right, because I'm dealing with this on a daily basis, all right? I have to deal with the public, the insurance companies, all right? So I see, hear, and live everything that's going on today in that business. And that business, I mean the insurance and the collision services industry, all right? Um, speaking of the collision service industry, did I happen to mention collisionservicenetwork.com, all right? The only, the only network, the only company... All right, that promotes and supports. Listen up, everybody out there, auto body shops, Long Island, listen up. CollisionServiceNetwork.com. We are the only company, despite what others might might have you believe and might have to have you take your money and have you believe. We're the only company for the last four years that has been representing and promoting, all right, the interests of the privately owned and operated auto body industry here across Long Island. And more importantly, we get to talk to the folks. All right, we get to educate the consumers as to their rights, expectations, and options when it comes to their insurance company. All, right? All important stuff. I don't know how much uh, significance a lot of these shops place on it. In my experience, it's not much. All right? um, and it needs to be. Okay, It really needs to be. You go to collisionservicenetwork.com and uh, you can find out uh, information about that and a lot more. All right, But we are the tip of the spear, folks. Make no mistake about that. All right, not only are we speaking to the folks, all right, but as I said, we are promoting the interests of the privately owned. What I mean by privately owned, okay, guys that are in the industry out there, you know what I mean by that, all right? You're not affiliated with the insurance companies, all right? And that 
speaking of that, we're going to kick this right off right now. All the body industries on Long Island, wake up, listen up. Okay, I'm going to speak in right to you. All right, are you a body shop owner? Are you a front guy, a manager? You checking me out? All right, Crash Course Podcast. All right, you skipped across the uh, the aisle there and you were dialing away or, you know, whatever you were doing and you found me, you're listening to me, you're trying to figure out who the heck this guy is, what we're about. Well, stick around, all right, because I, I used to say on the radio, you stick around long enough, you're going to learn something and you're going to probably have some fun and guess what? It's all free. <laughs> Doesn't cost a thing. It's all free. Um, but seriously, I want to address directly the auto body industry here on Long Island and more specifically the non-insurance affiliated shops. All right. So if you're listening to me right now, you're hearing my voice. Okay. And you're an owner of a shop that's not affiliated with the insurance companies. Great. Congratulations. That's exactly what we do here at quidenservicenetwork.com. And through Crash Course Podcast, we get to educate the consumers. That is your potential customer. All right. As to why doing business with a non-insurance affiliated shop is in their best interest. All right. But to the auto body industry out there, all right, guys that are operating outside the fray, all right, they're, they're trying to run their own business. They're trying to stay away from the insurance companies. They're trying to remain a truly free enterprise. I love the auto body industry. I got to say, I got to go off on a tangent here. So I've been doing this for 30 years, right? I was an insurance adjuster. Some of the guys hearing my voice probably remember me. They probably know me. Started out with State Farm, ended up with USAA. Um, and now I've been on the collision side of things for over nine years, all right? And really what I tell you, what tickles my fancy about all these guys, all right? And I'm saying tickle my fancy to be nice, okay? But what really grinds your gears about the auto body industry is you guys are real good at a couple things, right? Real good. And you really should take a bow for this and pat yourselves on the back. Bitching and complaining, griping, all right, and getting pissed off about all kinds of stuff, but then not, not doing anything about it. That's right. That's what you guys are really good at. I'm glad I got that out there, okay? In all my years working as, a, as an appraiser or as a claim rep or a bodily injury rep or a general liability rep, whatever I was doing, whatever capacity, I had to interact with the auto body industry. You guys, I got to tell you, man, I got to hand it to you. If there was an award show or if there was some kind of, some kind of certification process for that, you guys would probably win that every year. Bitch and complain, bitch and complain. But you don't really, you're not really serious about changing anything because to change something, that means you got to put a lot of effort in, right? Or some of these guys are going to tell you, well, I don't know about the effort, but, you know, I don't want to piss off the insurance company. You know, they, they might do things then. They might get aggravated with us or, or angry with us, and, they, and then they might lo- try and lobby Albany and, you know, all the excuses too. So it's, 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 you know, it's griping and moaning, pissing and moaning and complaining, and then, and then all the excuses that follow as to why they, they can't do anything. That's your industry. That's it. That's the auto body industry, okay? Small business industry um, with, that never really had any unified, uh, in my humble opinion, never had any unified uh, quali- qualitative, maybe quantitatively, but qualitatively never had any unified effort um, to change things, represent the interests of the industry, and really want to make a change, really want to see things happen. All right. It's just bitch and complain, moan, and throw your hands up in the air, and then all the excuses, all the excuses about why you can't do this and why we're not going to be able to do that and why this isn't going to happen, blah, 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 blah. All right. It's, the only, it's amazing. It's, it's one of the few industries. Um, it's actually uh, quite a phenomenon to watch. Uh, I've never been involved in, in an industry like this, at the auto body industry, where all that happens, and, and yet, you know, um, and yet, Nothing quantitatively ever really changes, and I can say I've been and I've been doing this for over thirty years. All right, now there's another group out there. You guys all know who it is. All right, I'm not going to mention the name. And they take your check every year, and they run around. They visit you once a year, and they pat you on the back, and they tell you, "Hey, you know we're out there, we're fighting the fight for you, and you know we're holding the line, and blah blah blah." And then they send out they send out a colorful magazine. It never used to be colorful, but now it's colorful. I guess that's because they're making more money off the backs of one page ads and everything else. Great, you know magazines. Guys, who's reading magazines anymore? Hello? 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 You know, wake up, okay? Magazines? We don't need magazines. What we need is action. What we need is change. What we need is something that's going to make something happen, 
Okay, you guys have been sitting on sitting on your asses for so long, bitching and complaining and making excuses. Nothing's changed. I could tell you nothing has changed in your industry in 30 years. You know what's changed? Here's what I'm going to tell you what's changed. Again, I'm addressing the Long Island auto body industry, guys. All right. This is Peter Crouch, Crash Course Podcast All right, for QuiddenServiceNetwork.com. QuiddenServiceNetwork.com, guys. Four years. Okay. Four years. We've been the tip of the spear here. All right. We've been working with the likes of Assemblyman Gandalfo. I don't know if anybody can see that. I'm holding it up. Okay. This is a letter. This was given to me at the end of the year. All right. This letter was drafted by Assemblyman Gandalfo at my request after I had presented the Assemblyman and now ex Senator Boyle, State Senator Phil Boyle, with a proposal based on my research, my experience, and my professionalism, my proposal highlighted key areas in the regulation that I felt, based on my experience, based on my expertise, needed to be changed to affect an outcome that would benefit the small business industry here on Long Island, the auto body industry, all right? Namely, the refinishing part. Now, this has taken a lot of hard work, and a lot of effort by myself, nobody else, all right? Body shops thought it was a great idea. The guys that I visited, they all, you know, cheering me on. <laughs> that's another thing you guys do. You're good, you're good cheerleaders. You're great at that. Everybody's a good cheerleader. Yeah, that sounds like a great idea. Go get them. But, um, but, but that's what I mean by being the tip of the spear, folks. See this? This is letterhead right here. Assemblyman Gandalfo, great man, all right? Great man. He stepped up. And look what else I got here. Guess what? Got over nine sponsors for this too, okay? Now, a lot of you are probably scratching your head and go, well, what is that? What are you talking about? Okay, so right now, we effectively are on the precipice of actually getting Reg 64 changed, all right? Specifically, changed so that every insurance company that does business in New York State, and again, this is going to be New York State, right? This isn't going to affect just the island. Every insurance company that's licensed to conduct in the business of insurance in New York State will be required to negotiate a paint material guide. Okay? Nobody else is doing that. All right? Not the guys with the fancy colorful magazine that comes out every month. Not the guys that visit you every month and tap you, tap you on the back and, hey, how you doing, man? And by the way, I need a check. Not that guy. Collision Services Network. That's right. Me. Collision Service Network, my efforts, all right, and the efforts of the uh, the company itself, all right? We have successfully met with these politicians multiple times, all right? Lobbied these politicians multiple times, and the result is, is now we have some real qualitative and quantitative changes that are in the works, okay? This is a letter, a final letter that was drafted by all, and, and endorsed by all these politicians, okay? Sponsor and the draftee and was forwarded to DFS, Department of Financial Services, okay? Right now, we're waiting, we're waiting for, the, for the outcome of that. They basically were directed by the assemblymen and all these other sponsors to make these changes immediately, all right? To affect change of Reg 64 to help the small business in the state. Obviously, the, the auto body industry, that's the only industry that's going to give a damn about Reg 64, so that's what Collision Service Network did, okay? That's what we're doing. And once we succeed here, we fully plan on moving ahead with other areas of the regulation that we have identified, all right, that I feel strongly need to be changed and we can prevail on, okay? Because another thing the auto body industry has been very good at, bitching and complaining and excuses, and also the other guys been very good at is um, not doing anything. Okay, even the guy with the fancy colorful magazine and, and, and the check every year. Um, I know it's not a lot of money, but still a check. You're still paying these people year after year after year after year. All right, and they've had opportunities in the past to do something about things. In fact, they could have did something about the DRP program, the direct repair program, right? The insurance-sponsored uh, repair program, but they chose not to. We're doing something about it. That's right. ClintonServiceNetwork.com for the last four years has been doing something about it. We're providing the consumer with an alternative. The alternative to what? To the insurance company. The insurance company's network program. 
And folks, that's what it is. All right, guys, listen up, man. If you're in the auto body industry on Long Island and you stumbled across me, this should, you should be getting good and pissed. All right. And, and you should be nodding your head in agreement with me and say, you know what? This son of a bitch is right <laughs> because I am right. All right. I'm right because I'm coming from the insurance side and the collision side. All right. And what I'm right about is that there's never been an alternative. OK. The other guys never offered you an alternative because they didn't care because they're duplicitous because they they need to be friendly with the bad guys and friendly with you guys. CollisionServiceNetwork.com, folks. We don't ride the we don't ride the seesaw. We don't ride the fence. All right. We don't ride. We don't ride the cliff. All right. We know what side we're on. We're on the side of the consumer and the side of the privately owned and operated auto body industry. So if that's you, then you should be contacting me right away and finding out how you can get involved with us and help us to support our industry and to continue moving forward. Otherwise, you're just another one of the body shop guys that makes excuses, throws your hands up in the air, bitches and complains, and at the end, doesn't really doesn't really help any, get anything done. All right? That's our industry, guys. That's your industry. All right? But CollisionServiceNetwork.com, we've offered a real alternative to what's going on out there, which is basically the collectivization of the auto body industry. All right? And the results are, like they say, the results are in the pudding. All right. The results are there, guys. Whether you want to admit it or not, the results are there. All right. You have more and more and more fish competing for the same food supply. All right. The food supply is drying up, guys. Listen up. Okay. Technology is drying up the food supply. But the fish, they're not drying up as quick. All right. Insurance companies thought 20, 30 years ago that a lot of you guys were going to be gone. Some of you are. Some of you are still hanging in there. I don't know how you're hanging in there, to be honest with you, but you are. Um, but you're not going to be hanging on for too much longer, all right? Restrictive parts, that's going to get more and more, more commonplace. Restrictive parts, restrictive programs, certification programs, manufacturer-driven collision repair programs, all right? If you're not on board with this stuff, if you don't have the capitalization to buy the tools, to buy the equipment, to educate the technicians, to pay good technicians, you got to pay these people, guys. You got to come up with benefit plans. You got to come up with good pay plans, all right? If you're not in the ball game with that kind of stuff, all right, then you're out. All right, you don't even realize you're out of business already. Now, maybe some of you are okay with that. I know some guys are out there right now laughing. Nah, this guy, you know, I'm a small operation. I'm a one-car garage. You know, if I get one or two cars in, I'm good. Okay, but what happens if one of those two cars, they don't come anymore, right? The one or two cars a week that you were getting, now it's one or two cars every two weeks, right? Or maybe it's every month. I don't know. I don't know what your volume is. But the bottom line is, is the industry has changed already dramatically. All right. There's been a paradigm shift in the industry. Okay. And whether you want to admit it or not, and whether you want to stick your head in the sand, that's fine. You know, I know some of the small potato guys, you know, they throw their hands up in the air and they laugh. Ah, I don't need any of that. I'm good. I don't need advertising. I don't need marketing. I don't need a network. I'm good. Okay. We well, are stuck in the past. Okay. You're stuck in the past. And, um, you know, history is riddled with people that were stuck in the past, all right? Basically, they're not around anymore, okay? Um, it's no different than what happened at the turn of the century with the Industrial Revolution, bye-bye horse and buggy, hello car, hello mechanization. Same thing that's going on now, right? Goodbye to mass labor, hello automation. Same thing that's going on now in the auto body industry. Goodbye to all the little small shops, bye-bye, and hello all the big production shops, all right, now the shop I work at, V&J, big production shop, right? 25,000 square foot. We just bought another 35,000 square foot building. We own half the block uh, on, on one area of Lindenhurst. I get it. That's not for everybody, right? It's a lot of capitalization there. It's a lot of investment. We got over 65 employees. But understand something. That's the future, okay? That's the future. The other part of that future is the insurance industry. Insurance industry has latched on to technology, right? And they are using technology, business practices, and also, I would argue, your stupidity, right? The body shop industry's stupidity, right? To advance, to advance their benefit, right? Namely, drive down operating expenses, drive down business costs, increase profit margins, control the process, and control the outcome. 
folks, I can tell you right off the bat, okay, and when I say folks, I'm talking, I'm talking to the auto body guys. This is this this episode is directed at all my auto body friends out there, right? All the guys that own body shops, specifically, if you own a body shop and you're not working for the insurance company, then you should be listening to me real close. All right. The insurance industry has collectivized the auto body industry. All right? That's what they did. Guys, I sat through these seminars. I sat through these meetings years ago, decades ago. I heard this stuff being talked and not talked about. And now here it is. All right. And when they talked about it, they didn't say, oh, gee whiz, what a great thing this is going to be for the auto body guys and the consumers. No, they said, what a great idea this is going to be for the insurance companies. We're going to save a tremendous amount of money. We're going to get these dummies, these dumbasses to go along with it because they're too stupid, too lazy and too cheap to try and manage their own business attract their own customers, develop their own approach to marketing, that they'll fall in line left and right. And they did. Look what State Farm did. State Farm rolled out their service first program. And I mean, holy shit, there, there were more shops lining up than State Farm knew what to do with. The hands were going up faster than a bobblehead. Unbelievable. And then, of course, what did State Farm do? Once they got all these, all these, uh, all these sycophants on board, they started lopping off all their heads when they said, ah, you're not doing what we want. You're not doing what we want. You're not doing what we want. Some of those guys didn't survive. You know why? Because they thought they knew better. They thought they were smarter than State Farm. And they basically threw everybody else to the curb. And when State Farm kicked them out the door, they had no business. And out of business, they went. All right? Now, I know for some of you guys, you're listening to this and you're going, ah, this guy's full of shit. And blah, blah, blah. It's not that simple. That's fine. You know, throughout history... Time, time, and time again, the uh, a lot of people fail to answer the siren call of change, all right? And that, that call has been loud and clear in the auto body industry here in New York, spe- specifically here in Long Island. It's destructive to the consumer. It's destructive to the industry. It drives down wages, corrupts co- uh, competition. It also leads to subpar repairs, all right? And you guys, if you're honest with yourself, you agree with me 100% on this, Okay. All these things that I'm telling you about is, is the outcome of these programs. Insurance companies know it. They don't care because the ends justifies the means. That's just the way it is, guys. Getting back to what I started talking about with the, with the insurance company meetings and everything, they could not wait for all this to come together, for all this technology to come to fruition. Because if you control the process, you control the outcome. And if you control the outcome, you control the dollar and cents. And that's what the DRP program, the direct repair, the insurance sponsored shop program is all about in the end. It's not about customer service. It's not about, oh boy, we want to help the insurer. We want to provide a service. Baloney. They didn't want to provide a service when I started in the industry. I started in this industry in the end of 86. Okay. And if I even, if I even so much as uttered the word, Find the body shop. Forget it. I was called in. I was called into my boss. Oh, you can't do that. Ba ba ba. And then, if God forbid, we actually had to help an insured, okay, or a claimant with a shop. We had to. We had to fill out a form. It was a disclaimer. It had carbon copies. You you had to list three shops. You had to let them know that you know you weren't getting in the middle. That you weren't recommending anybody specifically. One copy had to go to the state. One went in the file. Big big to do. They could give two rats asses about whether or not they were going to have to help you find a shop. Now, fast forward to the 21st century, and all of a sudden, woo, that's a great idea. Let's help everybody. Let's, let's push them all into body shops. So what do you think changed? You think all of a sudden they became these, these great, you know, these great uh, empathetic benefactors, the insurance guys? They said, oh, man, we've been doing this all wrong. We really want to help everybody. No, they want to help themselves. That's all. They want to help themselves. They're a business. I used to say this all the time. They're business, just like any other business. They're all about making money, making profit, especially if you're, if you're a publicly traded insurance company. Come on. Stockholder. Not the insured. Not the consumer. Not you. Not my auto body buddies out there that I'm talking to here on this, on this episode, okay? Wake up, guys. All right, wake up, okay? Times are changing. They've been changing for the last 10 years, and they're going to continue to change, and that change is going to accelerate. All right, like I said, I work at V&J. We are on the cutting edge. We are a forward-looking shop, future-looking shop. All right, um, we have, uh, you know, we have plans in place for all kinds of things, and those plans are laid out, um, you know, 
down the road in, in different periodic time. I'm not going to get into that, all right, because that's, that's, that's stuff that uh, has to do with the, 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 the business and the body shop specifically. But suffice it to say that V&J Auto Body, which, by the way, is a Quidden Services Network proud member, all right, they are a model of the future. And this model, guys, has, has actually been transposed across most of the country. It's real slow to get to the tri-state area, but it's here. It's here now, all right? And some of that, some of that tried to rear its head through things like Caliber and these other consolidators. I don't know, I don't know how much success that, that actually in the end is going to have. Um, it's a very difficult market to operate um, franchises in, in New York State when it comes to the auto body industry. I think some of those guys are finding that out. The margins are too small. The result is they can't pay what they need to pay. They don't get the best people. The quality in that shop goes down and blah, blah, blah. Same thing with the DRP program. I don't give a damn what anybody says. All right. If you're working for the insurance company, if you're a body shop and you decided to get in bed with the insurance company, that's because you're too damn lazy or too damn stupid or a combination of both to try and run your business on your own, generate your own customer leads, grow your business, market your business and advertise your business. So you said it was easier and quicker if you just let the insurance company do that because that's what you're doing. The insurance company becomes your advertiser and your marketer, and they send you people who you don't know. And um, if they come back, they come back. If they don't, who cares? Right? Who gives a damn? Because you're going to get more customers from the insurance company again. So Clinton Service Network, all right, we provided an alternative to that, that model. We set up a network of body shops, Okay. And I champion all my all my client business shops. I champion all these guys that got on board that supported what we were doing, especially the guys that got on board early on, like uh, like uh, Cavalier Auto Body, Harry, all right, uh, John Cacciatore with uh, V and J Auto Body. Thank you very much, guys. These guys were forward looking guys. They jumped on board. They saw an idea that 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 whose time had come. They wanted to get behind. They wanted to support it. All right. Now, silly me. I thought that that was going to be a no-brainer for the rest of these guys, too. But apparently, stupidity prevails, as I, as I started off the episode saying. Stupidity and laziness prevails in the auto body industry. Excuses abound. And uh, bitching and complaining and, you know, and, and filing complaints abound. Uh, nothing's changed. All right? But listen up, guys. But in all seriousness, no, you need to get involved with us. You need to help support what we're doing, all right? What we're doing is helping the privately owned and operated auto body industry here in Long Island. And through this legislative um, effort that we're doing, it's going to help uh, help it uh, statewide as well. All right, and that's only the tip of the iceberg, all right? And uh, before we go here, let's, let's also take a look at something here. Generate new business. Wow, there's a novel idea. Generate new business. I can't tell you how many guys I go to visit, and the first thing I say to them is how do you get customers to come here? And I can't tell you how many people look at me with the deer in the headlight look and go, what do you mean? Well, why should somebody come here? I just passed five body shops in the last mile. Why should they come to your place to, fix, to get their car fixed? Because it looks like there's five other guys that are doing the same thing. And two of those guys are actually working for the insurance company, which makes that even more pathetic. And they get, I get, uh, well, you know, word of mouth and, uh, you know, people come back. Great. Terrific. That's some business plan. Folks, take a look. Okay? Take a look. Guess what that is? All right? Generate new business. Guess who did? These are client shops, collision service network client businesses that have realized new business. Okay? And some of them to the tune of $30,000, 8200 9000 75 six. I can go on and on and on. All right, not to mention our personal injury attorneys who have also generated bodily injury leads as well. So, guys, if you don't think this is for you, you don't think that an extra $9,000 job a month or every couple of months or maybe even a year, you don't think that that's something that, 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 you, that you should be uh, interested in, I don't know what to tell you. I mean, maybe you should be, I don't know, maybe you should be selling hot dogs or something or working at Home Depot. I mean, I don't I understand how you run the business. You know, you, you become a partner of Coordin Services Network and you become, you become part of real change, okay? And you become somebody proud to put this up in this shop, all right, and let the industry and your customers know that you're part of Coordin Services Network, all right? The, the only company, the only company that's looking out for the folks, that's educating the consumers, 
as to their rights, expectations, and options when it comes to their personal auto policy. All right? They shouldn't just have one source. They shouldn't, they shouldn't listen to the insurance companies. Shouldn't be one biased, very biased source of information from consumers. And now, thanks to ClearServiceNetwork.com, they don't. All right, they can come to us. And um, they can educate themselves at their leisure. And if they need help, myself or one of our professionals is available to counsel them, to help them, and to hear their problems and, uh, and offer solutions. And sometimes those solutions mean helping them uh, locate a great body shop off of our network in their area. Sometimes that solution means helping them resolve a claim matter. All right, we've helped I don't know how many people. Many, many people over the last four years resolve claim issues, right? whether that involves unfair total loss settlements, unfair liability decisions, all right, um, personal injury. Right? Some people are unco- uncomfortable with that or they're not sure about it. All right? we've, we've helped guide people to make the right decision on that as well. Bottom line here, guys, all right, I'm talking to the auto body industry here tonight. All right, a crash course podcast here. I'm talking specifically to the Long Island auto body industry. All right, if you're working for yourself, all right, you're not affiliated with the insurance companies, congratulations, we champion that, and good for you. All right, more body shops should do that. All right, but if you're that guy and you haven't reached out to us, you got to ask yourself why. All right, not only do you have the opportunity to generate new leads, new business, maybe even capture it like these, these people did here, all right, these client businesses did, all right, but you also have the ability to help support your industry, all right, what we like to say, quidenservicenetwork.com, all right, support your industry while promoting your business, great, it's quick, easy, and affordable, all right, um, like I said, guys, I know, there's, I know there's the other guys out there, and they've been around a lot longer than us, but um, they're an idea whose time has come and passed. All right, Quidditch Service Network is a 21st century version of what was passed and what is coming. All right, we're giving you bang for your buck, all right, and we're putting teeth into our message. All right, we got legislative action going, um, and like I said, the good thing about us is we've been speaking to the consumer now for two and a half years. All right, that's your potential customer, guys. There's never been any organized, directed effort to reach the consumer with the, with the Long Island body, uh, auto body industry, all right? Clean Service Network developed that. And we're still developing it today through podcast. We were on the radio for two years. Um, we continue to grow. We're asking for your help. We're asking for your support, all right? Let's set aside all the hyperbole. Let's, side, let's set aside all the bloviating, all right? Let's, let's get serious about, about saving saving the Long Island auto body industry, all right? And I'm talking about the independent industry. Let's, let's, help, let's, help, let's help our industry remain a viable, a viable business, all right? And right now, guys, that's not happening, all right? The insurance companies gobbling up more shops. And when I say gobbling up, I don't mean actually, you know, gobbling up, but I mean the insurance companies Getting in bed with more and more body shops is not beneficial to anybody. It's beneficial. It's good for them. It's really good for them. All right? That's why they do it. (laughs) Trust me. If it wasn't good for them, they wouldn't be doing this. Like I said, 30 years ago, they didn't do it. They didn't want to do it. They couldn't do it. Okay? Now, they can do it, and they want to do it, and they're doing it. Why? Because they realized, holy shit, we can control this whole process. Control the process, control the course, control the outcome, drive up our margins. We make more money. These idiots have cut each other's throat. And that's what they got you guys doing, cutting each other's throats. All right? But um, if you're serious about, uh, you know, going forward in the future and seeing a uh, a low body industry here on the aisle remain viable, independent, okay, and uh, in the best interest of the consumer, right, which is what we all want to do, then... um, Contact CollisionServiceNetwork.com, all right? And you can do it two ways. You can either email us, you can text us, three ways actually, all right? 631-452-2569. That's 631-452-2569. And you can speak to little old me. Uh, The process is fast, easy, and it's affordable, all right? We get you on the network, all right? And we have a, um, 
We do have some different packages that we offer, social media packages. All right, we have a very dynamic social media media uh, program here, all right, and we can help you with that. And what I mean by na- dynamic, guys, listen, I'm not talking about take, I see it. You know, I see some of these shops, it cracks me up. You take a picture of a car that's got a dent in it or a picture picture of a car in the, in, in the, in the spray booth on the frame machine. Looks great, right? Smacked up car, painted car. Who gives a shit? Who cares? Your potential customer is going to scroll right by that. Or they might stop and go, oh, look at that, and keep going. It doesn't mean anything. It means nothing. Okay? You have to have meaningful, purposeful, driven advertising and marketing. Right? I'm not telling you anything. If you've been in business, you know that. You just don't want to get involved with it. Uh, as I said earlier when I started out and I was ranting and raving about the auto body industry, um, you know, among other things, making excuses, bitching and complaining, not really wanting to, to do anything or change anything. You also don't want to spend any money. You know, you got to spend money to make money, guys. I know, I know that's a hard concept to follow in the auto body industry. I know it now. I knew it when I was an adjuster, but now I can really appreciate it. All right. But uh, unfortunately, it's a reality in business. All right. And for most business sectors, it's a reality that they have to budget for. They have to provide for. All right. And they have to be purposeful in their approach to it. Auto body industry don't seem to give a shit either way. And hence, hence the amazing growth of the direct repair programs here on the island. Right. Because body shops turn around and said, holy shit, I don't have to do anything. Spend any money. I'll just sit back. And the insurance guys will send me work. Yeah. And they'll tell you how to fix the car or how not to fix the car. They'll tell you how much money you're going to make on each job so your margins dry up. And I don't want any bullshit about, ah, that's all a bunch of crap. It's not a bunch of crap. You guys working for the insurance companies, you know it, I know it. Your margins are small. They shrunk. All right? It's the only damn reason why if you're doing this, if you're working for them, the only reason why you exist, okay, is because volume. They're going to send you cars. So you're going to make a little tiny bit of money on a lot of cars. But when a lot of those cars dry up and that tiny bit of money becomes less and less, then you're scratching your head. Then you want to stand out on the curb with a sign and say, hey, I'm Tricky Dick Auto Body and I fix everybody's cars. Those people don't give a shit anymore because when they came to you when you weren't doing that, you told them to get lost because you were so busy doing the insurance work, right? But then the insurance work dried up. Whoops. And now you got a guy on the sidewalk with a sign. Remember me? I fix cars. Tricky dick auto body. Ha ha. And people just drive by laughing at you. All right. Don't be that guy. Get involved with Quitting Services Network. Let us help you to market and advertise your company and position your company for the future. And most importantly, guys, you're helping to support your industry while promoting your business. Very affordable. All right. Unlike the other guys out there that want to send you a fancy, colorful magazine and collect a check once a year, you know, I don't know. I guess if you like fancy, colorful magazines, I guess you got to go that route. But um, last time I checked, printed media and magazines are really a thing of the past. All right. So it might look flashy, might look cool, might look really great seeing that and putting it on your putting it on your counter, putting it on your little table in the waiting room, you know, woo! What is it doing? Okay, 30, 40, 50 years ago, I don't know, maybe that was the thing, right? It ain't anymore. You got to be proactive. You have to have a deliberate, directed program to gain and attract customers and retain customers. Unless you want to be, uh, you know, you, unless you want to be a sycophant and sit on the fence and you know, and smoke and joke all day and just wait for the good old bad insurance company to send you whatever cause they want to send until they decide they don't want to send you anymore. Either you pissed them off or you, you, you took too long to fix the car. And then when you take too long to fix the car, you got to cut back rental checks anyway. <coughs> I mean, who runs a business like this? Right? Who runs a business like this? Oh, you took too long. By the way, you owe us for the rental on the car. Oh, and by the way, you can't you can't blend the car. Well, the car looks like shit. Ah, that's that's not our problem. We don't want you blending panels. You guys out there in the auto body industry, you know damn well what I'm talking about here. All right, it's bad. The whole concept was bad from the beginning, and the insurance guys knew that, but they rolled it out because they knew the ends justified the means for them. It doesn't justify your means, okay? Trust me. And if you're truthful with yourself, you know that. Especially if you're a guy that's been in this industry for decades, you got to say to yourself, wow, my margins just ain't what they used to be. 
right? But guess what? Your expenses still are. Those keep going up. And now, like I laid out earlier, with the way technology is, with the way the materials are on these cars, with the new designs, with the new safety features, all right, with the with the dried up labor force, there's nobody out there, guys. There's nobody going in this business. Nobody leaving high school going, wow, I want to work on a body shop. Yeah, I want to fix cars and paint cars. There's nobody doing that. We're trying to resurrect that. There's a program at Stony Brook, a program in, in uh, Suffolk Community College that I, I was privy to. I had a team on my radio show, and we're going to bring them back on the podcast. You guys should should follow, keep following me. Uh, I'm going to bring those guys back. They're going to explain what we're trying to do here on Long Island to generate more interest in the um, in the trade, specifically auto body. All right, but for the foreseeable future, guys, that labor pool is really tight. Okay, and it's drying up. All right, and your your work, you're doing work for the insurance company. Great. Yeah. The only problem is you're not going to be able to afford to attract the best technicians out there. Well, you're not going to be able to afford to attract little Jimmy who doesn't want to go to college, but I don't know if he wants to go in a body shop because you can't give him benefits. You can't give him a livable salary. You can't give him vacation. You can't give him a trajectory of a future. You can't do any of that. You're not going to do that with working with the insurance companies because your margins are so damn small that you have just enough money to pay for your yacht, your fancy vacations, and your house and, uh, and put money in the bank, which is good. That's great. That's so what we want to do as business owners, right? We want to be able to set aside so much of our profit to build equity in our business, build equity in our future. That ain't happening, though, all right? That's not happening if you get in bed with the insurance companies. All right? And you're not, you're not controlling your own destiny, guys. You be honest with yourself. You're simply not controlling your own destiny. They come in. They shut you down at a whim. They turn you off, the spigot gets turned off, and all of a sudden, all the cars that were coming don't come anymore, and you have no viable customer base because you had no deliberate, directed program to retain customers, to attract customers, and now your single source of that has packed up and moved out the door, all right? It's all bad. Instead, contact us, collisionservicenetwork.com. You heard it first here, Crash Course Podcast. All right, give us a call, 631-452-2569. Stop denying what's real, all right? Start getting involved. Start helping us. Start supporting your industry while promoting your business, all right? Let's, uh, let's get on board, guys, all right? Especially if you're new in the industry, if you're young and you just bought a body shop and everything, give us a call. Reach out to us. Let us help you and let us all help each other to promote our industry and keep it a viable business. All right, check me out on the next podcast. All right, you know, we're always here. We're always on a tear. We always tell you what you don't want to hear. We're honest. <laughs> I try and make it fun. I try and joke. This podcast thing, I'm kind of just still kind of feeling my oats here with this. All right, transitioning from uh, the radio. Um, that's the only transitioning that goes on here. But transitioning from the radio to the podcast, it's been a little, a little different. Um, I'm liking it. All right. Um, but... Um, yeah, so continue to follow us, right? Instagram, YouTube, please go to YouTube, subscribe, become a subscriber. Go to Anchor, go to Spotify, click there, follow us there. Check out the old radio shows, check out the old podcast shows. Everybody get involved, everybody get on board. All right, let's build this thing and let's help help us to take this to the next level. 